Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different area of responsibility in Sheboygan County. A lot going on here and our largest department is represented today. Today I'm very pleased that we have Tom Agerbrecht, our Health and Human Services Director with us, and Jody Galloway, perhaps a new face to this program, but not to Sheboygan County Government. And I have to look outpatient services supervisor yes welcome thanks, thanks adam welcome thank nice you. to be here yeah nice to have you here this is going to be challenging for our crew going back and forth to two individuals rather than just one but i know they're up for it tom let's start with you please please uh, share with our viewers a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the health and human services department sure adam um all all counties in wisconsin are obligated to provide what we could call safety net services. Many states provide those services directly in Wisconsin that's delegated to counties. And counties have a lot of latitude under the statutes in terms of how they might organize themselves, what services they might offer. Here in Sheboygan County, decision was made by the county board, I think dating back to the late 80s, that combined what was previously a Department of Community Programs with the Department of Social Services, the Department of Public Health, and the Department on Aging into a combined Health and Human Services Department. And I think it's a great constellation. It gives us lots of opportunity uh, to collaborate and work with professionals who otherwise would be in separate you know, universes, so to speak, and it brings them all together. So we offer uh, the, the full gamut of health and human service programming as a county department under that umbrella. So at our main building on 8th Street, we have child protection, juvenile justice, child and family resource services, behavioral health, and public health. Uh, we have an aging and disability resource center in Sheboygan Falls, located on Forest Avenue. Um, Job Center offers economic support services and application assistance. That's located on Wilgus Avenue. And as of last year, uh, the Child Support Department was integrated into our department as well. Previously, another standalone department, and that's located in the courthouse annex. And Tom, how long has it been now since you've been the director of the Health I've, and Human Services? I've been with the county for seven years. Seven years, seven years. And let me tell you, this is one of our shining stars in county government. A lot going on in your department, the largest department in the county of the 19 departments that uh, we work with. What is your total operating budget and how many employees do you have? Total budget for next year is going to be uh, just over $33 million. About 40% of that comes from levy. Balance comes from state and federal as well as private pay sources. So we accept insurance payments for certain services. In some instances, individuals will contribute individually to cost of care. Uh, so again, about $13 million of that is levy. The balance is state and federal. We've got a workforce of 190 planned for next year. Yeah. And just an outstanding group of employees. I think one of the strengths of our organization as a whole is the collaboration, the leadership, just the, the dedicated workforce that we have. And, and you have some newer managers. You mentioned the divisions earlier. Could you mm -hmm. just touch on briefly your leadership team? Because I know you've got a good one. Sure, absolutely. So our, our business and administrative services uh, manager is Shannon Otten and she has been just tremendously helpful to us and she has oversight and involvement with everything that we do. She helps put our budget together and she's been just a tremendous asset for me and I think for the rest of our staff as well. Um, overseeing behavioral health, we have a new addition to our management team. That's Nick Larkin. Uh, Nick came to us just over the course of the summer. Uh, great, great addition. He has a nursing background as well as professional counselor background and um, so much of what we're doing now is focused on behavioral health and so Nick's addition to our team has been tremendous. Uh, Tim Gessler oversees economic support services at the Job Center. Carlin Raditz oversees our public health programming and Scott Shackelford we hired two years ago to oversee child and family services. 
a lot going on, a number of programs and services that we won't have time to touch on today, but as you just said a couple of minutes ago, behavioral health services mm -hmm. have been an area of greater priority and focus of late. Please share with our viewers what's been happening there. Yeah, well, I quite honestly, Adam, I, I pride myself. We try to respond to public needs, um, what the community um, identifies as priorities, and consistently, I know as I took the position seven years ago, there was the work of a um, ad hoc study committee looking at behavioral health gaps within the county. I walked in to see that report and saw a number of unmet needs. So that influenced me. Every year we have public hearings that uh, identify gaps and needs from a consumer and stakeholder perspective. Consistently, we get a lot of uh, requests to expand and improve behavioral health programming. Our public health division uh, collaborates with the hospitals and other stakeholders to do a community needs assessment every three years. Consistently, behavioral health needs pop up in that. And I think uh, a number of the viewers will recall uh, an extensive series the uh, Sheboygan Press ran in recent months about kids in crisis and mental health needs in the schools and elsewhere. Um, and there is a lot of data, health ranking data, if you will, that also suggests more to be done. So there, there's plenty of indicators to suggest we've had to pay attention to that area. So over the time of my involvement with the department, I think we've addressed quite a few things. There's more room to grow, but we added psychiatric hours through Jody's assistance. We were able to add telehealth capability so we can connect with psychiatrists remotely. We've added case management time. We've expanded residential treatment facilities. Um, Adam, I know you were at a community conversation on uh, mental health two years ago in 2014 at Blue Harbor, where a number of stakeholders came together and talked about the need for easier access to services. We have a lot of services in the community. Knowing what they are and how to get to them is not so easy. So last year we added an information and assistance position in our department for that specific purpose. It's not about helping people gain access to our services alone. It's about access to community services in general. And I tell you, a lot of great feedback uh, from the community about that resource. And then just most recently, and again, part of uh, Jody joining us today, is our uh, establishment of a drug and alcohol treatment court here in Sheboygan County, which again has been a great, great accomplishment. And a lot of thanks are owed to Jody for that. And that's a perfect transition because I know you and others have been so impressed with Jody's leadership and the work with, with the uh, treatment, the drug uh, core treatment facility and Jody has just been such an important leader, gave a nice presentation to the Health and Human Services Committee recently. Jody, please share a little bit about how long you've been with the county, your, your role, your responsibilities. Um, thank you. I've been at Sheboygan County for a little over nine years. Uh, I supervise the outpatient mental health and addiction treatment services at the county and I also oversee uh, our crisis system. And over the course of the nine years, what's changed from your experience? And what have you seen, as Tom said, what are you hearing? What are you responding to as your roles and responsibilities have changed over the years? Yes, I, I think that there have been, um, long ago, there used to be two uh, categories of folks that we would see. Um, folks who have addiction and uh, then residents who have mental health um, diagnoses and, and issues. Um, and more and more over the years, we now have um, people who have both an addiction and a mental health um, issue. Um, and so they, they have, they're duly compromised um, with both. And so that's been, that's been a challenge. Um, we've also moved more toward evidence-based practice um, which Tom has been very supportive of, and that's been very helpful uh, in attending to some of our um, more compromised residents um, who are um, quite ill. So crisis services, um, I think the community hears that from time to time, you know, what times, types of services are being provided for people in need, and we have these crisis services. What, what does that mean? What does that include? And why does that fall under your area of supervision? 
Well, um, we are um, mandated um, by uh, statute, uh, Chapter 51 and Chapter, chapter 34, um, to provide crisis or emergency services for individuals with um, mental health concerns and also addiction. Um, in the county, we have a really excellent system that is comprehensive, uh, in my point of view, compared to where I've um, been in, in other areas. Uh, we have a 24-hour uh, crisis line that people can call, um, and we also have a mobile crisis team um, that the crisis line can dispatch out into the community so that they can meet with individuals who are struggling um, in person. Uh, we also uh, have a crisis diversion facility uh, called Turning Point, um, and that is for individuals who are in crisis but don't need the level um, of hospitalization uh, per se. Um, they can go to this um, facility in the community um, for stabilization. Um, and then we work with uh, Aurora um, for our psychiatric hospitalization and detoxification services. And I know you can't talk about specific individuals, but what would be an example, I, I don't know if I want to say a common situation, but a, a prevalent situation where you're, you're getting a, a certain type of call or a person in need. Please give our viewers a sense of what kind of people are reaching out to us for help. Well, we, we hear from a lot of family members, family members of, of individuals who are um, struggling um, with depression and anxiety um, are two top ones in, in the recent years. We've also had um, several cases of um, young people in their 20s um, who were experimenting with uh, drugs and alcohol, um, and as a result of that, they became psychotic um, and needed to be hospitalized and stabilized um, as a result of that. Uh, and then um, the opioid um, addiction mm -hmm. and that epidemic has been um, the source of many, many calls mm -hmm. to our department for help. And if we had someone watching this program over the course of the next month who is a, who is a person in need of some help or a family member that has a son or daughter or a friend that needs help, and they just don't know where to turn or have never heard of this opportunity before, what would you recommend? Is there a, a specific a phone number that folks should reach out or a specific person or how does that work? How does a person take that first step to get the help they need? Right, if, if they're not in crisis but they're looking for services um, to be helpful, um, then they can call the county um, at 459-3155. Um, that's our outpatient services um, number, and there's always someone on call to speak to. Um, you, they can also walk into our department and meet with someone in person if they'd like to do that. Um, and then alternately, if they're in crisis, the crisis line number is 459-3151. So please repeat both those numbers for me. Okay, the, the um, Health and Human Services, um, outpatient services uh, is 459 3155 mm -hmm. and the crisis line number is 4593151. Outstanding. Thank you for the uh, the high end overview. Appreciate it. Turn it to Tom. Thank you, Adam, and welcome, Jody. Thank you. Um, a few minutes ago, as mentioned about the alcohol and drug treatment court that was um, just begun in Sheboygan County, and I know you were very much involved in in that getting going. Could you tell us a little bit about what led to that decision to go in that direction? Sure. Um, I, I wasn't involved in the process at the inception, uh, which occurred, I believe, at the, our CJAC committee. Um, and uh, really, it was in response to the devastation that opioids have had um, you know, across the nation, across the state, and also um, here in, in Sheboygan County, um, and not knowing what to do, um, lots of lives being lost um, and families being devastated, and um, it was... It, Treatment courts are an innovative um, approach that have been around about 10 years, uh, and we, you know, wanted to give it a try because they are uh, extremely successful. Right, and I know um, the purpose of the exactly the purpose of the treatment court, and exactly how does it work? Sure, um, the treatment court program seeks to identify uh, felony offenders that uh, their criminal behavior is motivated by their addiction. Um, and so uh, instead of them getting, um, going to jail or going to prison um, after multiple um, infractions um, or breaking the law, um, they would get intensive treatment instead. 
um, because it's a it's sort of a cycle. Um, the addiction, criminal behavior leads to more of more of the same, and those folks just sort of um, you know go th come through the system again and again um, because they're not receiving the services they need. So it provides them with intensive treatment and also um, very um, strict community supervision and monitoring um, to allow them to be able to. Um, start their recovery um, and then get whatever needs um, met that they need um, at the time and to become um, participants in the in the community again. Yeah. Not an easy process as I understand it for people to go through. It's not necessarily an easy way out but it, but the results can be really positive for both the community and the individual from what I understand. Yes, very very positive. The, the research suggests um, that uh, treatment courts are very, very much um, worth whatever uh, is spent on them and they actually save dollars for the judicial system. Right. right. I know there's been uh, contributions of different community members who've been involved in this um, to get it up and running. Could you talk about some of the other people who were involved? Absolutely. Um, we have a great team uh, which includes a representative from the DA's office, uh, from the public defender's office, probation and parole, uh, Sheboygan Police Department, the Sheboygan Sheriff's Department, um, who am I forgetting, treatment providers, and of course our staff from Health and Human Services who are on the team. Lots of people, lots absolutely. of different departments. Yes. Uh, absolutely. And what about the judge? And the judge. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Ed Stangle. He is the, he is the, uh, the captain of the team, absolutely. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, and what is the current status now? The, drug treatment court? And well, we started accepting applications for the program on July 1 uh, of this year and uh, to date we have had 29 applications. Uh, there are currently uh, nine people enrolled in the program and are actively um, going to hearings with the judge and um, doing all of the other expectations that are required. Um, and um, there have been, I think, 13 people denied because they don't meet criteria. Um, for getting in, and there's seven or eight that are pending. Okay. Um, if you're going to come up with something that you feel you've learned now in this process, uh, anything that you've learned in this situation? I know you're only initially into it, but something that kind of stands out to you? I think that um, the collaboration that has gone into this uh, project, this endeavor, um, is remarkable. Um, and so I've learned, I think, that uh, Sheboygan County is a great place to live where when the need arises, people come together and, um, you know, everyone puts in their, um, their specialized services and, and lots of good things can come out of it. Yeah. Appreciate all your efforts in that area. Thank you. Adam? Thanks, Tom. Jody, you, you made the comment about, well, there's this criteria that needs to be met in order to get involved. And I imagine some people watching this might be thinking, well, why would some people be included and not others? Could you get a, give an overview of what the criteria we're talking about? Sure. Uh, the criteria includes uh, being a Sheboygan County resident. Um, the individual has to be suffering from a pretty severe substance use disorder or addiction. Um, they have to be uh, at high risk for recidivism um, and they um, also cannot be a violent offender uh, or a um, essentially charges for being a drug dealer or operating a drug house. So not just anyone gets the opportunity to go through this and it, it really is a life-changing experience and opportunity for people who otherwise otherwise might be put in a, our detention center and, and not have the benefit of this support to break out of the cycle. Well, and on that topic too, when I travel around the state, here are the county board chairs and that talk about it. Not only is it a victory in human terms, uh, it's also, which is secondary, but it's still there. It's a victory in financial terms eventually to the county. So it's, to me, it's a win-win from what I can see. Right, and it's, it's the, one of the really um, exciting things, um, sad, but exciting at the same time that um, most folks would think, well, people want to get into the program because then they won't go to prison for their charges. Um, but what we hear the participants saying um, when they apply uh, to get in um, is that this program will save their life. That's that otherwise they would be dead. Right, right. How many other counties have already implemented uh, a drug treatment court like this? 
I'm uncertain of the number. I know of several counties that, that have them, Waukesha County, La Crosse County. I thought um, it was sure around eight or 10 or so. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not sure how many. Yeah. But we know it's a proven model, it works, it's a win-win as Tom said. Yep, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, Jody, for your leadership. I know between the two of you and all the others involved, you got this done and it's a major, major opportunity to change lives, improve lives in our community. It's a win-win and I know Chairman Wagner from the beginning has been a cheerleader for seeing this get done and is so proud that you were able to, to do so. So thank you both. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Tom, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but there's a lot of other things going on at the Health and Human Services Department too. What are some of the other initiatives that are in play or that you've been a part of? Sure, well, uh, you know, uh, springboarding from, from the drug and alcohol treatment court, we, we thought of this as a two-phase approach when we got up and running. Phase one was get the court up and running. We still have a big gap in terms of detox services for opioid addictions. Um, those uh, detox services are not typically available in hospital settings, so it falls upon us to come up with a model that can be community-based as an alternative to hospitalization. Um, I fully anticipate that will be up and running in 2017. And so at that point, we're going to make a much bigger impact in terms of addressing this issue and getting it under control. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, as you know, Adam, through your involvement with United Way, we have been strong supporters of this new community partnership for children. Yeah. So I said earlier, we do safety net services, and it's, you know, it's frustrating for me because that means everything else has failed by the time people get to us. So it's kind of nice to do something on the front end in a preventative mode. So we've uh, lent some support to United Way and other community partners to do this community partnership for children. We're supporting a welcome baby initiative whereby first-time parents are going to have visits in the hospital and connection with services very early on. Um, through our public hearings, we, we heard expressions of concern about the youth moving into the community from larger urban areas partially in response to the job opportunities that exist here, but some concerns about acclimation to, to the community, acclimation to the culture. So we've partnered in a pilot program with South High School to offer youth and family mentoring to those kids identified at risk. We'll take kind of a, an experimental approach with this, and if we can demonstrate through that initiative that we don't end up with referrals in juvenile justice and other areas, it'll be worth expanding that investment down the road. Um, I think that's a very exciting opportunity, and glad to see you're very much involved with that, and the idea being you'll replicate it if it works. Yeah, that's right, and I think I think so. Jody's reference to evidence-based practice. Let, let's see what data we get from it. Let's see if it works. And if it doesn't, let's change things up and try something else. I think it holds great promise. So I'm pretty excited about that too. And then also, you know, what, what we don't identify with this drug epidemic that's going on in the community is the impact on families as well. So we're hoping to put together a coordinated service team to work with our social workers who are working with families who themselves might be drug addicted and see if we can't get integrated support teams connected early on to help battle that, return kids to family units, and um, in the interest of psychiatric services as well, we're going to be uh, assigning one of our public health nurses to make contact with families who have kids that have been hospitalized under emergency circumstances, not to force service on them, but to ask if we might be able to offer some assistance. The goal would be let's prevent emergency hospitalizations from that point forward. So, uh, and then the other thing I guess I want to mention on top of it all, we are embarking upon what I think is going to be a major and long-term learning initiative, better understanding the impact of trauma on, on uh, health, future life, if you will, there's a lot of strong evidence out there that suggests uh, kids who've been exposed to serious trauma in their early years are going to have very, very troubling future outcomes. And so uh, our entire workforce now is engaged in this learning initiative so that we can better identify that, respond to that, and avoid re-traumatizing people through the work that we do. And, and, and if you step back, 
and you think about providing a child with safety and you remove them from their natural home, that seems like a good thing under the statutes. It's traumatizing to that kid in reality. So we have to be more aware of that, more cognizant, and respond to that in better ways. We had an inaugural uh, community education opportunity on this uh, just back on November 3rd, and nearly 500 people in attendance, many, many school personnel who were extremely excited about the subject matter and wanted more. So that, to me, is going to guide everything that we do for some years to come. So we've got plenty in front of us, and uh, but we've got good staff to pursue it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what you all do. To um, obviously, the chairman and I have a pretty good feel for it, but each time we have one of these interviews, we, we interviewed uh, Joe DiCecco here recently, who, as you mm -hmm. know, has been just a champion for our community and does a lot of challenging work, him and his team. And, and a great be, partner with us. Great partner, going to be retiring the end of this year. And one of the questions we asked him, and we only have a minute remaining, but it, as he talked about the challenging work that he does and the very mm -hmm. challenging work you do, working with you know people in crisis sometimes at the end of their rope I mean you are as you hear this save my life this program this service this connection and I just have Tom and I have nothing but respect for the work that you do and that your staff do uh, every now and then Tom and I'll be on the phone I'll be referring a call to him and I'll get a flavor maybe one day that <laughs> week or that month of a person in crisis and angry for some reason or another or just hurting for some reason or another and it's a very quick appreciation and, and reminder to me that many of your staff have these calls every day hourly it, it, it's just remarkable so on behalf of the county board and our community Thank you for your leadership. Thank you to your staff and your team for the amazing work you do. You, you do change lives for the better, and we appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. I appreciate it. So if you have any more questions or want to learn more about health and human services, roles, responsibilities, the services that we provide, if you know someone that could use some help or need someone to talk to, don't hesitate to reach out to Tom Egebrecht, our Health and Human Services Director, or Jody Galloway, our Outpatient <laughs> Services Supervisor, I was so hoping I didn't need to look at that again, or any of their co-workers. Uh, we're here to help, and they do good work. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Next month, our Health and Human Services Director, our Human Resources Director, Jean Gallimore, is going to be here to talk about some of the challenges we have countywide with filling some of these open positions and getting good people. It's one thing to retain when you have wonderful people in place, but it's also another to uh, recruit and it's not just Sheboygan County, it's countywide. We've got about 3,000 job openings in this community, and we need good people. So please join us next month to learn more about that. And until then, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful Christmas holiday, and we'll see you in another month or so. Thanks for joining us.